Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm sorry that we started uh, we started a few minutes late. Uh, seems we had some technical issues getting uh, getting started with the with the software. Sorry about that. I hope um, uh, I'm wondering if I can get some acknowledgement that you can see me and hear me, and that you can also see my uh, screen. <clears throat> Uh -huh, maybe not. I'm not getting any acknowledgements. Um, ah, thanks, uh, Alexandri. Thank you. Uh, thank, thanks very much, everyone, uh, for letting me know that. Uh, again, uh, sorry for this. Uh, let's. Uh, I just want to give uh, the attendees uh, just uh, one more minute to pop into the room, and then we'll get going. I see there's more people still still joining. Uh, we'll give it 30 more seconds. Okay, uh, let's do this thing. Um, hello everyone to today's session. Uh, uh, if you don't know me, Nals, uh, my name is Ilan Asbel. Um, uh, this is the second uh, session of the series. Uh, the first one was an overview of the Auto Charters product suite. Uh, the second session today is uh, speaking around how to filter um, uh, for the best uh, trading opportunities using the tool. And uh, uh, the next uh, session will be around risk management. So today's session about how to pick the, pick the best uh, trading opportunities using the AutoCharters tool. Uh, before we get going, I just want to uh, focus on this uh, very important disclaimer that uh, uh, trading CFDs on margin carries a high level of risk and may not be suitable for all investors. Before to deciding to trade contracts for difference, you should carefully consider your trading objectives, level of experience, and risk appetite. It is possible for you to sustain losses that exceed your invested capital, and that you should not deposit money that you cannot afford to lose. Please ensure that you fully understand the risk, risks and take appropriate care to manage your risk. All right, so uh, now all the lawyers uh, are happy. Um, uh, so we get we we uh, we let's get going. So uh, for those of you who don't know how to get the auto charters tool, you click on client tools. Uh, click on Auto Chartist, and that takes you to a page that looks like um, like that looks like this. And um, uh, there'll be a download uh, link. Uh, you can go to the web application directly. You can install the MetaTrader plugin. And this MetaTrader plugin is the one that I'm going to be talking about today. Um, I'm not going to go through the installation process. You download it, click it, and click next a few times. And uh, what will happen is that um, you will get uh, two uh, pieces of uh, info in your MetaTrader, one called the AutoCharts Risk Calculator, which we're not talking about today. Uh, that's the next session. And the Expert Advisor called AutoCharters. Now, uh, you, um, in order to get uh, going using AutoCharters, you drag and drop the AutoCharters EA onto your chart. Um, now, I know it's an EA, and some of you may be worried that it's going to trade on your behalf, but that is not what it does. It does not trade on your behalf, right? It, um, it simply scans the market. So, so don't be nervous about dropping our EA uh, onto your chart. Right? Um, and I've been through all of this already uh, last week um, around uh, what this all means, your trading setups. Um, it scans uh, all your uh, symbols in your market watch window for trade setups across all different time intervals. Uh, so you can see uh, there's something on GBP, JPY, 15 minute, and we can click it and have a look at what that looks like. Uh, here's the opportunity over here, uh, moving towards this resistance, uh, this green uh, resistance line um, over here. Uh, here's, let's say something else, GBP, USD, uh, moving rapidly towards this other green resistance line um, at the top over here. Right. Uh, so yeah, I'm moving pretty quickly today because I'm assuming you were at the previous webinar session. If you weren't, uh, you got to catch up and, and watch and watch the recording of the of the previous one. Um, 
So today uh, we're going to be discussing how to choose which of these to to actually look at and follow. And so the first thing I want to go to is um, the filtering se section. So the way uh, I normally set up my filters is to look at uh, completed or breakout chart patterns, uh, breakout key levels, and emerging key levels. And this is what each of these look like, and I'll show you how to trade them. Let me just remove M30 and M15 uh, candles as we get too many results. Okay, so um, Euro USD. So let's look at um, this example in Euro USD, which is a falling wedge, bullish uh, breakout. Have a look at that. Okay, here it is, a Euro USD bullish breakout. You can see the wedge here quite clearly. Now, um, uh, uh, um, uh, as you can see, the price has been moving down. And now there's a bullish breakout. Now, in uh, normal circumstances, I, I personally would not uh, would not follow uh, such a signal because um, it is contrary to the prevailing trend. Right? So if I have a look at uh, the uh, the prevailing uh, the prevailing trend right now, it's definitely uh, a bearish, and uh, now we get a, a bullish. Uh, signal a bullish breakout on the upside. Um, I I am not a big fan of being uh, too contrarian on these kind of uh, longer trends. Uh, so um, if you were going to kind of put my back against the wall and say, hey, you have to take this position, then I would say, look, you got to wait for a little bit more of a confirmation, right? So a little bit more of a confirmation of the breakout uh, before. Uh, before taking a long position, uh, because this uh, last few candles might just be a little bit of uh, a little bit of noise. Uh, before I continue, I see that uh, one or two of you are having some uh, some issues where my screen is not clear. Uh, is that just uh, Muhammad that's suffering from that, or is my screen clear for all the rest of you? Um, I only see that that message now. <clears throat> Uh, does it seem to be clear, all clear? Okay, good. Thank you. Thanks, people. Thank you, people. Thank you very much for that, confirming that. Uh, Muhammad, maybe it's your um, maybe it's your bandwidth or something. Uh, okay. So, um, again, getting back to the topic, I look at this, um, and I think uh, the way I, I look at that, and I see falling wedge, which tells me it's a downward pattern with a bullish, with a bullish breakout. Um, for me, I don't personally follow that because... Uh, again, I don't like being contrarian. If you're a contrarian trader, then that definitely might be something you look at, but that's not for not for me. Um, similarly, I look at rising wedge with a bearish breaker down, and I I potentially see something similar, right? I I am not sure whether I would trade something like this, um, although uh, I can see a a confirmation of the breakout. Uh, which means that I would consider it. Also, uh, this is not a very, oh, this is actually a long-term trade. This is Euro NZD daily chart, right? So this is actually quite a serious upward trend uh, with a bearish breakout. Uh, I think uh, quite a lot of room uh, to move over here, right? Quite a bit of space uh, uh, between these two, between the current price and the, and the, um, and the forecast region in gray. Uh, so it could be something I would consider uh, again. Maybe wait for a little bit more of a confirmation for end of for another bearish uh, candle today, and then a potentially a move. But again, I don't like these contrarian things. So let's look at uh, this one over here. Um, so this is a uh, uh, as you can see a triangle on NZD JPY hourly chart. Uh, this is a sideways or consolidating. Uh, uh, market uh, with a with a bullish breakout, and you can see it broke out, and then uh, very quickly pulled back. Uh, another example of why it's extremely important to uh, to uh, uh, um, uh, to get a confirmation of the of the breakout. Now, the interesting part for me that I'm looking at uh, over here on this pattern is uh, how. Um, 
there is another trend uh, forming uh, this way, right? Uh, a kind of a channel or a wedge uh, falling in this direction. Um, so uh, uh, I might actually uh, even consider taking this position, uh, maybe wait for a candle or two for a small turnaround and uh, potentially taking this position uh, long. Okay, um, let me move on to some more patterns that I want to show you. Um, okay, let me see one or two that I really want to want to look at. Okay, double top. Uh, this is quite an interesting one. So for me, uh, this is uh, quite interesting because uh, there was a breakout. Uh, you can see one col one. Uh, bar uh, breakout and then uh, reversal back again, right? So very clear to see that uh, pound Swiss franc is still a really comfortable trading uh, in its uh, uh, trading range. Now, personally, these are my favorite kind of patterns are the ones that have horizontal uh, uh, levels, okay? So anything that's got a horizontal level, it's something that I'm a big, big fan of. And I'll show you now why that actually is. So um, if you uh, click on this little world icon, um, there's a URL which you can copy and paste into your browser. It's under the words performance statistics. If I uh, put that into my URL, I'm going to come up with some performance stats uh, for the instruments I'm looking at. Now, as you can see, uh, just from the overall uh, picture, we give performance stats on chart patterns, key levels, uh, breakout key levels, and approaching key levels. And you can see how the key levels, right, which are the horizontal levels, those are the ones with the highest percentages, right? Um, but let me click onto the chart patterns first. I have found that the patterns that involve horizontal levels, such as ascending triangle, that looks something like that. It's got a horizontal level at the top. Right? Uh, a descending triangle, uh, double bottom, double top, um, head and shoulders and inverse head and shoulders. Notice how Oh, here's a rectangle. Notice how, in general, the patterns with the horizontal levels are pretty good performers. Yes, they do obviously fluctuate up and down, but in general, I found over the years of, 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 of doing this that the ones with the horizontal levels are really, really good performers. If we go back to the actual uh, key level breakouts and key level approaches, you'll see that um, these generally are really, really good, right? So um, in general terms, the, the, the key levels are really, really star performers. So if I go back into my, uh, into my meta, I want to show you what I use. This is the reason why I would select the breakout uh, chart patterns and key levels. Um, now the breakout chart patterns, what I would look at always are the, are the, um, the uh, setups which have a horizontal component to them, right? That's what I normally uh, look at. So this is why I, I display them on my screen uh, here. For example, this uh, descending uh, triangle is something that I would, I would look at. Why? Because it's got this horizontal component to it. If you want to remove all noise, then you can just remove the chart patterns and just look at um, the, the key level approaches and the breakouts, if that's really what you want to do. But again, I like to have the chart patterns there just to uh, have them in case I do see something with a horizontal uh, component uh, to it. Right. So going back um, into the statistics for just a moment, I want to also um, uh, show you uh, one or two uh, other little hints and tips that I have. Uh, one of the important things to look at is actually the hour of the day when we're trading. So 
uh, we can see quite clearly, I'm here at uh, GMT plus three, um, which is just a few hours away from, from London. You can see that as the London session comes in, uh, the stats get uh, really a whole lot better than when than we're out of market hours, right? And what I mean by out of market hours, uh, as you may or may not know, London is the uh, world capital for forex trading, right? It's not New York or uh, or Tokyo or Sydney. Yeah, those are major financial centers, but really all foreign exchange clearing and well, it's, and uh, liquidity happens primarily during the London session, during the European session. And so if you come back to the real core of what order charters does, and that is the identification of psychological support and resistance levels, right? So that's overbought, oversold levels. Uh, you'll come to understand that psychology happens when there are market participants, right? Um, if you have just a few people trading, there's no true market psychology that, that's uh, being played out in the market, right? Psychology happens when there's lots of participants. And so um, naturally you'll see that um, the chart patterns uh, uh, perform really substantially better during the, the um, uh, European session. Uh, if you look at the uh, horizontal uh, levels, they actually perform pretty much across all uh, time frames, although there's definitely a lull, uh, you know, around midnight in the UK when most people are sleeping, uh, and certainly some of the percentages do get higher uh, during the UK session. But in terms of horizontal levels, um, uh, really performance is is stellar uh, throughout um, the uh, the the trading day. Some of you may be asking why not just use approaching key levels when trading? Those seem to be the best performers, right? Not sure why my order chart is stalled there. Let me just re reload it. Um, and I'll answer that question quite, quite easily, is that the stats for the approaching key levels, and I'll show you what that looks like, that's something like this, where there's been a key level. Uh, you can see that quite clearly um, this pattern or this um, uh, price of uh, pound Swissy has hit uh, this level so many times, actually even before that line uh, was drawn. Uh, you can see tons of times, very important uh, level here. Um, and it's moving towards this line. So sometimes this amount of space there is or the number of pips you have between the current price and when we identify this pattern is sometimes very, very small on these approaching key levels. These approaching key levels are these gray icons over here right, in my graph right now. Um, so although they're really good, they hit their, their level quite often, you do need to be uh, in front of a computer um, uh, uh, watching them very carefully if you wanna trade them. Uh, let's look at a few more examples. Uh, let's look at the support example here on all JPY hourly chart. Uh, where is the level? Oh, there it is, the level over here. You can see how close the price is uh, to that level. I mean, it's almost touching it, right? So um, again, this is something you can't really trade unless you set a um, uh, some kind of uh, sell stop. Um, that would probably be a better way to trade, but you can't trade it on the spot price. Whereas if we look at these uh, kind of um, these uh, uh, breakout patterns, which are the colored patterns, you can see that the price is broken through and now potentially moving down to this level. And that's quite a large uh, amount of time for you to make some, uh, make some money. Uh, from that, um, uh, from these movements, right? From this trade setup. So again, uh, don't just think, oh, because the approaching key levels are the best, those are the only ones I'm gonna look at because there is a double-edged sword, right? You can't have everything in life. <laughs> now, um, one thing I do wanna point out is um, that uh, Tickmill is one of the few brokers that has subscribed to one of the most premium services we have, which is called Our Favorites. Uh, let me explain uh, what this is. It's actually a, a little um, uh, unassuming little drop-down box over here. 
uh, which is really, really uh, powerful. What this little drop down box does is that it looks at all the current trading opportunities in the market, combines them with the performance stats based on the pattern, the symbol, and the time of day. And then it filters for those best trading opportunities. So let me show you. So if I only look for things which are 60% or greater opportunities, well, actually, let me add in some chart patterns in this filter um, so that uh, we get uh, a lot more uh, information in there. If I'm looking at, uh, if I remove this filter completely, right? Let's see how many pages of results we have. We have four pages of results. Uh, actually, three and a little bit pages of results. If I filter for 60% uh, probability, I get oh the same ones. <laughs> if I look at 65% probability, I get only uh, two and a half pages of results, right? If I go to 70% probability, I get only uh, looks like one or just under two pages of results. So what does this probability actually mean? Um, first, I have to tell you that, uh, you know, disclaim the fact that past performance may not be indicative of future performance. Second thing is that this probability is not how much money you would have made, right? I would have made 70% on the market. That, that's not what it's saying to you. It's saying to you that out of these patterns that you've got on your screen right now, in the last six months, 70% of similar patterns hit their target price, which means patterns on this symbol, this time interval, with this pattern itself, resistance, at this time of day, hit their target region uh, at least 70% of the time. Again, it's like the weather, right? So there's a 60% a, a chance of rain or 70% chance of rain. Doesn't mean there's gonna be rain, right? There could be rain, there may, may not be rain, right? So again, past performance might not be indicative of future performance, but certainly it gives you a good idea of, uh, of uh, the probability, right? And may even skew the, the, the chances of making money in your, uh, in your favor. Right. So it's a really interesting filter. Uh, now, if you go to uh, 75%, you get less than uh, one page of results. If you go to 80%, you're looking for an absolute miracle. Okay, <laughs> uh, so, so don't look for miracles. Uh, you know, um, I think you always, if you're going to use these performance stats, sit at 60, 65% or 70 at most, uh, right? Um, as soon as you get to the 80% range, your uh, population size that, on which the stats are generated are so small that uh, you know you you might uh, want to take them with a pinch of salt, right? Um, so uh, uh, try set it at seventy percent, and then you get the really kind of the the creme de la creme of trading opportunities. And even look at this, even that channel down that I didn't want to trade earlier uh, does come up as a 70% opportunity uh, for the last six months. Again, I still wouldn't take it. I don't like being a contrarian. Okay. Now, one thing I, I, um, I do want to point out quickly is that, um, uh, let me just start up my visor. Uh, uh, this little program allows me to show you my Oh, and now I can't do it. Okay, so it allows you to show you my uh, um, um, uh, cell phone on on the on um, on the on the screen. Uh, let me actually quickly get it going. It's telling me I need to download a new version. Always my luck, you know. Uh, during a presentation, it's telling me to download a new version. So uh, let me just quickly down get that download going, and then I'll switch back to um, to my uh, presentation in in the meantime. So I see that um, uh, Bart, I won't say your full name because I, I, I'm going to struggle to pronounce it. It's uh, Bart I'm um, sorry if I made a debauchery of that, um, is asking, are there stats for specific chart patterns for specific time frame? So, so Bart, what I want you to do is I want you to actually go into your meta, click on this world icon, copy and paste these performance stats into your browser. 
And then what you can do is you can actually look at breakdowns. Now there's two dimensional breakdowns as well towards the base of the screen. You can see um, the interval against the direction, uh, the pattern and the intervals, the symbol and the intervals. Um, I think there's definitely something wrong with our stats right now. I don't know why we're not getting the 240s and the 1440s. The interval, the hour of day. So lots of different kind of statistics that you can you can look at. Um, if you don't want to just look at the, the symbols uh, and the patterns and the intervals, you can definitely look at all the, the kind of the, the two-dimensional uh, matrices uh, that we provide uh, to in this um, uh, in these uh, performance stats, right? So um, uh, you can you can definitely do that. I wonder if I can just quickly install this. Um, I don't know why it's asking me. Just as I was preparing for this for this presentation, everything was working, and now suddenly it's not working. Um, okay, so let me go back to my my meta. In the meantime, now what I wanted to show you is that you can actually get uh, these uh, same opportunities on your mobile phone, right? Now, uh -huh, here we go. Uh, let me just make sure it's all connected. Um, uh, so I'm gonna click on view, here we go. I should hopefully see my, um, here we go, there's my screen. I hope everyone can see my screen. This is my screen. So if you go to the uh, Google Play Store, the Apple uh, uh, App Store, you can download the Auto Chartist application. Just look for Auto Chartist and uh, download it. And then once you start it up, click on I accept uh, your terms and conditions. Click on login using QR code. And then if you just uh, scan this uh, QR code, Um, Auto Chartist uh, mobile app will automatically uh, uh, log you in. And you can see that in this app, I can select the same filters, right? So, so if I select everything over 70%, I, uh, I would select OK, and it would show me uh, the same results as I see on my meta. Uh, look at this. So here is a GBP Swiss franc one hourly graph. Here it is, GBP Swiss franc uh, one hourly graph. Ord JPY uh, uh, 60 minute graph. Here it is, or JPY 60 minute graph. The same opportunities available on my, on, my, on my cell phone. Obviously the beauty of having it on my cell phone is that I can go into settings and um, obviously enable push notifications, right? Uh, and, and set my push notifications to over 70%. Uh, push OK, and then you can select what you want to get push notifications on as well, right? So uh, this is a really, really interesting feature. If you are not on your meta the whole day, but you still want to get alerted to to uh, good trade setups, uh, quite interesting to to uh, download and install um, the the uh, the Auto Chartist mobile application, right? And again, how to do that? Oops, I clicked on the wrong button. How to do that? Click on the little world icon. Not the world icon, sorry, the cell phone icon. It'll actually tell you search auto charters in Google Play or App Store. Do that and then log in using the uh, using the QR code, right? Um, that will uh, really give you the ability to not have your meta open the entire day. Uh, just have your cell phone open. The thing is, though, is that you don't want to get inundated with push notifications. So in terms of the push notifications, try and set your uh, push notification, the minimum probability higher to 70 or 75% so that you only get a few notifications a day, of course, right? So um, uh, otherwise, you know, you don't want to get uh, hundreds of notifications a day, then you're going to go and uninstall the app, which is not what our objective is, okay? Um, also in the mobile app, uh, you you can get some more information. For example, if you look at GBP Swiss franc, uh, you can get some more information about um, uh, this opportunity. Uh, you can uh, also copy uh, the forecast into your clipboard instead, in, in case you want to open up your mobile trading app and copy a, a target region um, in there. Uh, you can send yourself an email and you can look at volatility analysis. So. The volatility analysis obviously is very important in filtering out uh, trade opportunities. And I'll show you what that means now. Let me go back to uh, the meta for just a moment. 
uh, and let me uh, zoom in. The um, the uh, uh, expected volatility ranges or volatility analysis is available to you by default when you use auto charters. And that gives you the expected price range movement for the next hour, four hours and 24 hours. Okay, so when you evaluate whether to take an opportunity or not, you can see that this forecast level that we're going for is le less than an hour away. So this price could hit this forecast level in less than an hour. So if you're going to go and take your kids to school or meet your friend for lunch or dinner or a cup of coffee, and you're going to be out for more than an hour, um, this might not be a good opportunity for you to take because it just doesn't fit into your lifestyle, right? Um, uh, for example, um, let's say you, you want to set a stop level over here and a take profit level over here, then you know, you're going to hit this uh, stop loss or take profit in, in, in really in the very near future. And it doesn't give you the opportunity to react or, uh, you know, maybe change your stop loss strategy or move your take profit out if the market starts moving rapidly towards it and you want to take more money off the table. So, again, I urge you to not to completely ignore these blue lines on the ends, um, but uh, look at them. Uh, before you take your uh, 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 position to see when this opportunity is going to hit. Right? Let's look at this uh, CAD Swiss franc um, resistance opportunity here. So you can see, uh, I'll zoom in a little. You can see that uh, this is a daily chart on, on, uh, on uh, CAD's uh, Swissy, that if uh, it goes towards this level. If the, the price of CAD Swissy continues to, to go towards this target gray level here uh, and it hits it, it'll hit it only within the next uh, 24 hours, right? So there's plenty of time for you to, uh, uh, to adjust your stop loss and take profit and move things around as, as need be. So again, uh, keep an eye out for that. So let me summarize uh, what we've learned today because I've been speaking for about 30 minutes uh, and I want to open um, uh, to uh, Q&A. Um, um, the things to keep in mind when you're looking at trading opportunities, if you're not filtering, uh, look for trading opportunities that have uh, horizontal components in them. So things like resistance, support, um, descending triangles, double tops, ascending the double top. Those are the kind of things you should be looking for, definitely. Unless, of course, you're a, 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 a kind of a, 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 a mean reversion, well, not a mean, a, a kind of a, a anti-trend uh, player, right? Uh, a non-conformist, then you can look at these others, but personally, that's not what I look at. Second, um, uh, secondly, uh, look at the performance statistics. The way you get to those performance stats is you copy this URL uh, into your browser. So look at the performance stats. Thirdly, use this uh, minimum probability filter, which does the really difficult work for you of merging the currently available uh, trading opportunities along with the performance statistics to give you, uh, you know, what over the last six months have been uh, the best trading opportunities. And the last one that I want to add in, which I actually should have said first at the very beginning is reduce the number of instruments you have in your market watch window. Okay, so when you reduce that, the number of trading opportunities that 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 auto charter shows you um, in the window reduces as well right we don't we only show you information based on the market watch window okay so so if you're not trading let's say gbp swiss franc remove it and then um the opportunity will remove so let me show you an example of that you if i just go hide gbp swiss franc i'm not going to wait for it to reload i'm just going to force it to reload 
you'll see that that GBP Swiss franc opportunity at the top uh, disappears, right? So it's not there. So if you bring this down to just a half a dozen or uh, four or five instruments, you'll get far less opportunities to look at. And that's the one thing you shouldn't be scared of. Don't go out looking uh, to place a trade or forcing a trade. Let the market come to you. There's always lots of opportunities happening across lots of different instruments. Don't force the trade. Let the good trades come uh, to you. Uh, and then, of course, the last thing is uh, don't forget the uh, the mobile application uh, uh, to alert you, right? Uh, and um, the way to alert you is to go into this um, little icon over here and log in. Once you've done this once, once you've logged in once, you never have to log in again, right? The 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 app will just be available to you. Uh, you just open the app as as you would from um, uh, your reg any regular application will come up, and then of course, if you enable uh, push notifications, you'll get notified of the best of the best uh, trade um, trade setups. Okay, and with that, uh, I I think I've I've uh, said uh, enough. Um, let me uh, go and have a look um, uh, at some of the the questions. I see. Um, uh, you guys now like to look at the chat window instead of the questions uh, window. Um, uh, so, uh, Bart, you asked if you're looking at looking at daily uh, TF, there is no possibility. Sorry, what is a, a, a TF? Um, uh, uh, maybe you're talking in terms of the stats. Uh, you are definitely supposed to be time frame. Yeah, daily time frame. No, no, they're definitely um, stats. As something has clearly gone wrong on the daily stats. There should definitely be statistics on daily. As soon as we're done with this uh, presentation, I'm going to head off to my uh, support team and ask them uh, what's going on. Uh, maybe it hasn't been reported or hasn't been noticed by them. Uh, so uh, wait for tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow, there'll definitely be daily time frame uh, statistics available to you. Um, don't don't worry about that. Um, uh, so uh, uh, Mohammed, um, the uh, these trading sessions, uh, the last one and the next one, uh, are available online. Please, um, uh, please, could you uh, um, ask your uh, Tikmal representative? I guess it'll be on their YouTube channel. Um, I believe uh, this training. So look for the previous one. You'll see my name there, Ilan Asbel, uh, and um, and you'll see the previous one and this current one. It normally takes about a day or two to post because the guys um, edit, you know, the the big the noise at the beginning and the, the end, um, and then post them. Um, uh, uh, so um, Akinola, uh, you're asking. Um, uh, is the next presentation going to repeat uh, today's? Uh, no, the next presentation is not going to do any repetition of today's. The next presentation, we're not even going to be opening the Order Chartist Expert Advisor. We're going to be purely looking at the Order Chartist Risk Calculator, uh, which is the most amazing tool uh, you have ever used in your entire life. Uh, I love it even more than my own uh, uh, market scanner, which we discussed today. Uh, so really uh, join us next week. And I can tell you, it's not next week. I'll tell you when that is. Um, that presentation is going to be um, October 21st. So it's next week, Wednesday. Uh, same, uh, I believe it's the same time next week, Wednesday. Uh, please join us for that presentation. It'll be about risk management. Uh, Super interesting, especially for those of you who are looking to improve your uh, stop loss uh, strategy and and stop losing uh, a, a lot of money uh, on on your trades. You know, that'll be a really really interesting one. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, oh, the, oh, sorry, Wan. Wan is asking. Sorry, Wan. I didn't mean to ignore you. Uh, Wan is asking. Uh, you came in late into the presentation. How to install the Order Chartist MT4 app? Uh, quite quite simple. Uh, you uh, you visit the uh, uh, Tickmill website. You go to Client Tools. Order. Click on the Order Chartist link, and then. Um, you just scroll down until you find the um, install MetaTrader plugin. Uh, it's that easy. You shouldn't require a login or a password or anything if you have a live account. So it's free to live accounts. I guess I should have mentioned that in the beginning that no one's trying to sell you anything today. Uh, this is purely educational. Uh, the tool is free to use uh, with a live uh, account, a Tickmill. Um, uh, 
Ali is asking me the best probability suggested. <laughs> Ali, there is no uh, a, a best probability suggested. Um, it's, uh, you know, um, I have learned over the years how to look at, uh, at just the list without filtering. Um, I've learned to look at the list and know what's the best and what's the worst. Um, uh, personally, I think anything, if, even if you click on 60%, it clears out a lot of the noise. And I think that's 90% uh, of, uh, of, the, of the task is to, is to clean up noise. Once you're through with the noise, um, everything else follows, then look at it rationally um, and, 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 and choose the style that works for you. Okay, I don't want to enforce a probability for you. Um, what I do want you to focus on is join us next week for risk management. That's going to be, that's going to go a long way into making sure that if you do make the wrong trades, you don't lose an excessive amount of capital, right? Uh, so please do join me for that for that uh, webinar for for next week. Thank you, everyone. Uh, love talking to you again. Sorry about starting late. Um, hopefully next week we'll be on time. Uh, thanks again. Enjoy the rest of your day or your evening, wherever you are in the world. Bye.